I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. I placed my fingers in the five impressions left by the fallen stone. It was weird. They fit perfectly. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. Hello. Ah, hello there. Let me introduce you to my pals. We've already met. I want you to know you have my sympathy. Oh, it's just terrible, awful. It's the worst news I heard all day. Come the bad news, all right, for this week and the next. The whole year. It's worse than that. It's the worst disaster in living memory. Isn't it the biggest calamity in the history of the village? I would say it's the biggest in the history of Ireland. The most awesome disaster since mankind paddled out of the primal plop. There's no beer. What about Sean? Why aren't you out looking for him? There's no point in launching an ill-equipped expedition to save the lad. In a life or death situation, preparation is essential. That's why I slipped in here. For a point. Is a glass of beer more important than a man's life? Were you talking to me? To all of you. Sean Fitzgerald has met with God knows what, and all you can do is drink. Sean has gone for a ride in a flash car, that's all. Why don't you calm down and join us? I gotta go. Fawcett creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could, but it kept on dripping. Thank you.
The trickle of water was quickly absorbed by the plaster. A lump of hardened plaster lay on the sand at my feet. The plaster cast was a pretty neat replica of the back of the stone, complete with protruding fingers. I eased the solid piece of plaster from the sand. Underneath, it had formed a perfect copy of the statue. The hardened plaster cast fitted snugly into the five matching sockets. There was a soft thud, then silence. Where did you stay last night? At McDevitt's. I got to drinking with Doyle and a couple of the guys. That explains why you look so ill today. Did you get any sleep at all? Not much. I had to share the room with another guy. Did he snore? Hardly. He was dead. And you say P. Graham has disappeared? Without a trace. But my visit wasn't a complete waste of time. P. Graham's gem? The Templar's gem. Whoever Jacques Marquet is, he's in for a disappointment. Jacques Marquet? He's the guy who should have collected the gem from Fitzgerald. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. I can't sit here all day, much as I'd like to. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the Kron Museum. And why don't you see if Rosso has heard anything? Okay. Anything else I can do for you while I'm out? Shopping, a trip to the laundromat? Just take care of yourself. Excuse me. What do you want now? Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Mamad. I heard he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, I do. One moment, monsieur. It's Tobart, monsieur. He insists on talking to you again. Thank you, Moo.
What now, monsieur? What do you make of this white powder, Rosso? It is plaster. Say, you're good. What do you make of this, Inspector? Astounding. Where did you come by a stone like that? I was given it by a man in a bar in Ireland. Do you recognize the gem? It is unfamiliar to me. If such a jewel had been stolen, I would know it for sure. Have you heard of Professor Pegram, the archaeologist? Molly Pegram? The second son of Lord Barclay Pegram? I don't know. I only read about him in a magazine. So much for the efficacy of rehabilitation. What has he done this time? He made an important archaeological find in Ireland. Do you know Pegram well? I have connections with the family, but I wouldn't say I knew him at all. Is his name really Molly? Of course not. That was the nickname he was given at school. All his friends and acquaintances know him as Molly. Ever heard of a guy called Marquet? Jacques Marquet? Marquet? I know the name well. He has a record for suspected blackmail, kidnapping, arson, and art theft. An all-rounder, huh? How come he's on the loose? His bravado is matched only by the courtroom skills of his attorney. So long, Inspector. He was a thin-faced, pallid guy with a questionable taste in outlandish clothes. My mother used to dress like that. I beg your pardon, are you André Lobineau? That's me? You want my autograph? No, I was told you may be able to help me. Help? My name is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay, shoot. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing. I'd like to shake you by the hand, Andre. Not now, Georgie. Do you recognize this white powder, Andre? No. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Alamut is the name of the place where the Hashashin were based. Where is it? Somewhere in what used to be called Persia. I'm not too hot on modern geography, I'm afraid. The most recent map I have shows America as an English colony. What do you make of this tool? Interesting. Where did you get it? From a dig in Paris. Vraiment? I didn't realize there were any excavations in progress in the city. What do you make of this ID card? Nothing. What do you make of this? It's the biggest gemstone I've ever seen. Where did you get it? From Professor Pegram's messenger boy. Pegram? Professor Nigel Pegram? He's in Ireland, investigating a Templar site, isn't he? He was, until he disappeared. Did uh, Pegram find this on his dig? Yeah, the site where this was found was a Templar castle. Do you think it could be part of the Templar treasure? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. You're not one of those crazies who think the Templars still exist, are you? Uh, well, I try to keep an open mind on the matter. Does the guy in this photograph look familiar to you? No. Take a look at this nose, Labineau. It really doesn't interest me, Georgie. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment? Do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, 
There are certain people who'd stop at nothing to get their hands on it. Intriguing. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Without seeing the manuscript, uh, that's a tall order. Just tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. When was this? Oh, uh, back in the summer. Uh, July, I think. The second week of July? Maybe. Yes, it was. Uh, just before Bastille Day. So Pegram was in Paris at the same time as the other victims. Pardon? Victims of what? Uh, nothing. Just thinking aloud. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure. It was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the Revolution. A public toilet? Montfaucon was the place of execution for many thousands. A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope while the crows devoured their flesh. That explains the image of the hanged man. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland in a village called Loch Marne. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin, but there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the Revolution. What can you tell me about Philippe Lebel? He was responsible for the extermination of the Knights Templar. I know that, but why was Philip so hot to get rid of them? Mostly because he wanted to get his hands on their treasure. He had an enormous debt and a lifelong war with England to fund. The trouble was the Templars were a highly respected holy order. If the Templars were so powerful, how did this Philippe dude wipe them out? By underhanded dishonorable means, of course. The Pope was Clement V, a Frenchman. French, huh? Handy for Philippe. Fate had nothing to do with it. He was Philippe's puppet, planted to further his political ambitions. Philippe wanted the wealth of the Templars and used Clément to get it. So what was Philippe's plan? What happened? Sealed orders were sent out all over France, not to be opened until the appointed day. That day was Friday, July 13th. That's the origin of our superstition regarding that date. At dawn, throughout the whole of France, the Templars were arrested. It was the biggest bust in the history of the world. What happened to the Templars after their arrest? Philippe was out for blood, so he handed the Templars over to the Inquisition. Not surprisingly, they confessed to a sensational and sordid list of blasphemies. Like what? Oh, the sort of things you read about in the gutter press. Devil worship, lewd sexual practices, <laughs> spitting on the Holy Cross, that kind of thing. Well, that must have given their lawyers some headaches. Whether or not the accusations were true, this was not good publicity. Most of the charges were probably cooked up, <laughs> but so were the Templars, <laughs> literally. Hundreds of them were found guilty of heresy and flamed grilled at the stake. They died protesting their innocence. But surely Philippe had no proof of his charges against the Templars. A man will admit anything under torture. The Inquisition fabricated some nonsensical demon called Baphomet, and then suggested to their victims that this was what they worshipped. But they didn't have to agree. The records show a Templar coming to trial with both feet burnt off. Fragments of flesh and charred bone falling from the stamps. What would you not admit to, to stop such torment? So there was no truth at all in the Baphomet accusations? Not a shred. Almost every victim described the idol differently. No, 
Baphomet never existed outside the sick minds of the Inquisitors. So Philippe stole the Templar's riches, huh? Oh no, they weren't stupid. The King's troops marched first on the Temple in Paris, then to the Templar home port at La Rochelle. There was no trace of the treasure, and the fleet of the Knights Templar had set sail. Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? I sure can, Georgie. Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. The King of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The order became known first as the Knights of the Temple, and later as the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, André. Glad to be of help, Georgie. How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So, their money, goods, and lands were donated to the Order. The Templars soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Oh, if it does, the truth has never been made public. What do you mean by that? The Templars have attained a mythological status, like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah, not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come round and take a look. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, she's a woman. Maybe it was my imagination, but I noticed a predatory look in his eye. Suddenly, this friendly historian had turned into the big bad wolf. This friend who has the manuscript? Are we uh, the anonymous girlfriend? She lives at 361 Rue Jarry. Ah, I know it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome.